What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, back here for another Tottenham update where we're going to delve deep into the last, I was going to say 24 hours of Spurs news. It's probably about the last three days, seeing as it is a Monday afternoon. But we've got some transfer news to, to talk about first and foremost. And we're going to bring up that old name, Edmund Tapzoba, once again, as Christian Falk says that Tottenham do retain an interest in Edmund Tapzoba for the summer, which I kind of find hard to believe, to be honest. I mean, he'll be expensive. Um, we've already got like three kind of quality first choice centre backs in the squad can you really see a space for another one yeah I don't really see an obvious space for him in terms of do can I justify Tottenham spending probably even more than we would have to spend last summer I, I, depending on his contract situation I don't know if his contract is up but obviously if anything his stock has grown since last summer well he was known as one of the best centre backs if not the uh, one of the best centre backs in the Bundesliga last season that's why we wanted him so much and it's interesting the the, the discourse around you know when we talk 28 okay so he's got a long time so, so the discourse around did we did we make the right choice between Tubsober and Van der Ven. Everyone's pretty much, all Tottenham fans are pretty uh, very happy with Van der Ven. I'm delighted with Van der Ven. I think he's been brilliant. But the talk now is like, whenever someone um, talks about going for a more expensive option, they go, well, look at Tubsober and Van der Ven. We spent less on Van der Ven and, and, and look how that's turned out. But what I would say is, I mean, have you been watching Tubsober this season? He has been incredible. You, Leverkusen are unbeaten in the in the league right now. He's been one of the shining lights of, of their of their back line pretty much every single game. I mean, if if we were to sign Tapsoba or instead of Van der Ven, I think we would probably would have been talking about um, an um, still an amazing player here. So I don't I wouldn't say it was like we made the right choice in Van der Ven. I'm just saying we just had two great options and we picked a good yeah, option. No, it, yeah. Look, in in reality, we picked a good option in Van der Ven, and, and I'm delighted that we that we've got Van der Ven. But if we've got Taps over, who knows? I mean, I think he probably would have been the better option, to be honest. I think he is the better of the two players. Um, you know, we can use both his feet. His ball playing ability is better than Van der Ven. It's just that recovery pace. I think Van der Ven does have that over Taps over. But um, look, I think he's a quality player. There's no two ways about it. I am very happy with Van der Ven. But I, in terms of this news, and can you see us signing him in the summer? I just can't see it. I mean, considering the money it's going to take, I can't. I don't think Tottenham right now want to spend. I mean, let's be honest, it's going to take 70, 80 million probably. You reckon that much? I mean, how much we were talking about in the summer? We signed Van der Ven for 40 because he was slightly cheaper mm. than um, Tabsoba. I think Tabsoba, they're talking about 50 in the summer. If anything, his stock's gone up because he's been incredible. So um, I think you're talking about at least 60, I would say. I mean, I guess I don't know the financial situation of Leverkusen. I know teams in the Bundesliga are usually uh, more willing to, you know, do deals and stuff like that, especially with teams in the Premier League. So maybe you can take a bit off that, but I reckon at least 60, 60, 65 will do it, yeah. I think, yeah, I think you're looking at, I think 65 minimum, probably. I think 65 to 70. I think there's no reason why they shouldn't demand a lot of money unless he's going to like force a move potentially. Yeah, I mean, look, we, we. I think if he was in the Premier League, it would be a lot more. But because he's in the Bundesliga, um, they are usually selling clubs over there. Um, Leverkusen are going to win the league this year, which is crazy uh, to think about. Leverkusen have never won the Bundesliga. That's also a thing. So he's he, he might not be in a position where he's like, I'm desperate to leave because he's going to get Champions League football. They're just... They potentially, uh, who knows? They could potentially be on the on the end of an invincible season. So he might might like it's different when you're like in a mid table Bundesliga team, or maybe even like in a top four Bundesliga team. You're thinking, I want to go to bigger things. But when you're literally going invincible, maybe he thinks they got a chance at the Champions League next season. Who knows? Potentially, but when you look at it, even though like it's still they're still selling clubs over there. And once you go won the league with Bayer Leverkusen and go unbeaten a whole season, is there really much more that you can achieve at Leverkusen? Probably not, but he might fa he might think, why not give it another season and see what we can do mm. in the Champions yeah, League? Yeah, that's might. also true. But also like, you know, once the call comes of the Premier League, it's very hard to reject mm. that, especially with the wages that you're going to get in the Premier League as well. Yeah. Um, another Bayer Leverkusen player that Spurs have been linked with is Odison Kusudu. Uh, I'm not sure if I've uh, Kusunu, I think. Kusunu. Sorry, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. But Christian Falk again is saying uh, Tottenham are also watching another Leverkusen defender in Kusunu. It would take at least 50 million euros to sign him. So I guess like if it's going to take 50 million to sign him, you would think it's at least, you're probably right, probably an, an, add another 20 million on for Taps over. Exactly. Uh, he's obviously a bit younger. Uh, he's really had a good season uh, this season for Leverkusen. Plays really regularly. I think he's played um, 16 of their games season um i think 22 years of age or 21 years of age 23 yeah 23 years of age um right he plays 
Uh, he's a right-footed centre-back. So he's been brilliant. Um, and I'm not surprised that we're looking at him because, you know, you look at um, how they've been playing this season and you don't, you don't uh, you know, become unbeaten without a rock solid back line and he's so powerful and he's got I don't think he's quite got the um, on the ball ability of Tapsoba but off the ball uh, he's pretty exceptional so physical so quick as well so I'm not surprised I really think he could fit in Tottenham really well but maybe um, in terms of on the ball obviously he's not as good as like a Tapsoba It's interesting with him as well because before he made the move to Bayer Leverkusen he played for Club Bruges and he was deployed at times as a Club Bruges as a defensive midfielder right back, right midfield, centre back as well. So you're talking about a very versatile player as well. And when you're looking at the two players, Taps over or him, I think it's much more likely we pushed a button on someone like him than maybe a Taps over who's just going to be an astronomical price. I mean, I would argue if you're going to pay 50 for him, you might as well pay 70 for Tab Sober, in my opinion. But yeah, you're probably right. If if 50, I think 50 is still too much. Are we really going to pu- pu- push the button on 50 million for him? I don't know. Yeah, you know, that's the report, though. We don't know how accurate that mm. actually is. So I reckon you could probably get him out for a bit cheaper than 50 million. Mm. Um, but that's the report from Christian Falk. Another centre back that Spurs are linked with, another name I'm going to butcher, is Dean. Heisen, I think we're going to call him today. Well, I think that's a good effort. <laughs> AS Roma <laughs> Live are reporting that Tottenham have now made an approach for Juventus central defender Dean Heisen, who is currently on loan at Roma. Spurs are readying an offer of 30 million euros for Heisen this summer. He's making waves this summer. Mourinho's had such high praise for him. He scored an absolute wonder goal a few weeks back for Roma. 18 years of age, centre back, uh, making his name in the league right in the uh, world of football right now. 30 million does seem like an attractive kind of price for him. But then again, like if we're going to sign him, we've got Ashley Phillips waiting in the wings. Yeah. Um, Mourinho did say he's the most talented centre back he's seen in a long, long time. So he I ain't think, seen Ashley Phillips. Well, maybe not, but. He has seen a lot of very talented centre-backs in his time, Jose Mourinho, that's for sure. I think he knows a good centre-back when he sees one. Um, and one, and you talk about the goal he scored the other week. He he took it from the, the edge of his own penalty area. He went on like a mazy run, literally to the edge of the box. Um, again, it, it, was this, it was in Serie A and he culled it in into the top corner from 25 yards. Yeah. So it shows bravery and also unbelievable technical ability that goal that was was displayed as well and usually dutch center backs usually are very good quite can be quite good technically as well so clearly one to watch out for um it's clearly one he's been having a really good season at roma this year i think oh look eight games he's not like played loads but two goals already but two goals and really making waves so maybe it's one that we're looking at like we can jump the gun very early but as you say we are. We do have three centre backs at the moment. He comes in probably his fourth choice. So is it better for his development? That's what he's got to decide. But I think he'd be a. a he looks like a great prospect. I don't think he's one we're signing. I don't know to to. I think he'll pro, I think you'd have to sign him to be in the first team. But is it one where I see him coming and getting loads of game time? So it's for him to decide. Yeah, with next year in European football, there will be opportunities there to rotate if we do get Europe. By the way. Uh, you're looking at him and he's completely ambidextrous. You know, you don't know if his stronger foot is his right or his left. He's complete, equally as strong on both sides. So that could be so um, valuable mm. to us as well. I see. Yeah, it's very inter- that would be a very interesting uh, thing to consider. Let's talk about the Tottenham under-21s now. They took to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on the weekend. They beat Fleetwood Town by six goals to nil to make a place in the Premier League Cup quarterfinals. Jamie Donnelly, a star performance from him, four assists on the day. Will Lankshire bagged a hat-trick on the day. I think it was like an 11-minute hat-trick mm-hmm. or something from Will Lankshire. Um, unbelievable. And uh, goals from Dane Scarlett, goals from... Um, now John free kick yeah and uh, th- was there another one in there so as Santiago. well uh, San- Santiago with his unbelievable technical ability that guy has um, if, if anyone's seen the highlights of that game some of the goals on offer were absolutely to die for that some of the assists from Jamie Donnelly were just insane weren't they yeah unbelievable and they really put on a show 6-0 against uh, Fleetwood Town in, in the cup as well um, I think Joe Jamie Donnelly you know after the game was talking about how um, they really oh, I think actually it was all anxious it was talking about how they really executed the plan um, you know which they were training uh, throughout the week and it was they played it to perfection and look we, everyone's been so excited about the under twenty, under twenty threes for uh, or oh, under twenty one. Sorry, for a long time we've been banging the drum. I think they're well clear still top of the league. Are they still won every game, or they're still no, like, they unbeaten. drew against West Ham. Are still unbeaten. They, yeah, they they've drawn one game. They won the rest. So 
they're absolutely killing it in the in the league. And then this was like an opportunity in front of the Spurs fans in the stadium to really put on a show. And not they didn't just win, but they emphatically battered Fleetwood Town. Fleetwood couldn't get close to them. And some of the goals were absolutely extraordinary uh, for such young players as well. What the confidence and quality they're playing with. And it actually started a bit of a discourse on um on on X about you know watching these players ball it out. Is it a shame that we haven't seen them more? Is that something to criticise Ange for? Is it just a case of look they're still young and just because they're doing it in this on this kind of stage doesn't mean they're ready for the to the step up for the first team. I think um, particularly as you saw what Liverpool did on the weekend winning the cup with all those kids coming in and playing a vital part not just um, you know they came on in the last minute but the majority of them played for the whole half an hour of extra time you know and they actually rose to the level of of the game. I thought they were exceptional, especially that Dan's up front, the way he was leading the line at such a young age, I thought was absolutely brilliant. Um, so I do think with the injuries that Spurs have had this year, this season, it is a bit of shame we haven't seen more of them, to be honest. Yeah, I'm trying to think of um, when we could have fitted them in. Obviously, Liverpool have had crazy injuries on Sunday which is why they got their opportunities mm. but yeah as you say Spurs have also had times where we've had a, a big injuries but um, yeah we have neglected to use um, a lot of these players obviously Phillips didn't play yesterday I don't think Dorin did Dorrington play as well I don't think he played either I'm no sure. Dorrington's injured I think uh, yeah so so neither of them played yesterday but so they're not maybe not an example but obviously when when um, we had both centre backs injured. We chose to go for Emerson and Davis instead of maybe giving Phillips a run out in the forward line. You know, Donnelly's had a few minutes here and there, but you know, we chose maybe you know Lacelso. We chose other players instead of uh, maybe giving Donnelly a start here and there. Santiago, you know, we've had problems on the left wing. Maybe he could have got an opportunity, but we've chosen to, you know, at some points we shoehorn Richarlis in there and things like that instead of giving Santiago a run out. So I do think there are some occasions where maybe you could at least give them an opportunity and we, we haven't. But I don't, I don't know if it's, it's fair to criticise Ange on that or is it just something that we just hope for as fans to bring the youth through? I don't think it's a major criticism in in terms of these players should be starting because I don't think they should be starting and I think the, maybe the starting lineups that Ange chose was probably the right course of action but at least they could have given been given like 10 minutes 15 minutes at the end to to maybe try and come on and make a difference I think it's a bit unfair to say about him with the centre-back situation because it's much different coming in as a young centre-back than maybe coming in as a young attacker so I probably wouldn't have played the young centre-backs but I would have given the young attacking players a go a more mm. of a go and when you're looking at Liverpool and the way they've utilised their youngsters like everyone's giving Klopp a lot of credit for bringing on these players and yeah rightly so but Last game was the first game that these guys started to get a go. I can't remember who they played last week, midweek. Uh, Luton. Luton. But again, like these players only came on the last few minutes um, against tired legs when Liverpool have just been having so many injuries and a lot of um, fixture congestion, right? Donnelly has also been coming on for last minutes of games when he, when we've had injuries as well. So Ange has been using Donnelly in a similar way that Klopp has been using his youngsters as well. I just saw one. I remember watching, seeing one tweet saying, "You can't like." Uh, it was a it was a video of Santiago's goal, and, he, and it said, "Like you can't tell me this guy it wouldn't be better to give a chance to than than Werner or um, or Johnson or something like that." Something, something to that effect. Um, so I understand fans' frustration that maybe some of these youngsters are playing so well and looking so exciting, and sometimes uh, some of the other players who are who are kind of makeshift players in our first team can be a bit underwhelming. Um, like, is it worth you know? giving the minutes we're giving to Werner right now to someone like Santiago and help his development rather than, you know, getting a short-term boost by whatever Werner can give us. I mean, there is an argument to say it, but look, Ange has to live and die by his decisions. I'm not criticising him. If he sees him in training and thinks Werner is going to be much more effective than Santiago and it's not even worth giving him a chance, then so be it. But it is a shame that we see them on this stage and they, it just seems too easy for them. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it does seem too mm. easy for them and I would like to see them given a go. And I do envisage like when next season comes around, we've Got a lot more games you will see them a bit more hopefully i really hope so um let's talk about lucas bergval now as jugarden beat united ik nordic in the svenska cup yesterday five goals to nil lucas bergval scored two goals got one assist one of the goals was absolutely i mean it could be up for a puss cast that's how good mm. it is i think it could be you know when you're like uh 
uh, when you're young and you like watching all those great football compilation goals on mm. YouTube, like like the, you see them like a hundred times, like these great goals, like Zlatan's overhead kick and all these different things. Like that is a good one of those goals that would turn up on one of those compilations 100%. of like best goals ever. 100%. It was unbelievable, quite incredible how he ran, literally ran through. I know it was only the Swedish league, but this guy is only it an wasn't even the Swedish. Kid. I think they were playing like a, a lower tier Swedish club. But he's a, but but he's still only 18. He's a kid himself, and he ran through that whole team, picked the ball up from the halfway line, literally ran through I think two or three players got into the side of the box somehow beat another two players and come back inside and put it into the empty net it was quite an incredible goal and definitely one to get the mouth watering when it comes to him coming into the Spurs setup this season next season but it wasn't even just that goal his assist was quite incredible and also his first goal was really well taken as well I mean what his a lot of people have been comparing him to to a Frankie De Jong but from some of the goals yesterday some of the touches you remind me a bit of a cross between Frankie De Jong and maybe a bit of a Phil Foden as well his close control how was able to manipulate the ball as well he seems like such an exciting talent and the goals yesterday obviously Spurs fans are going crazy about them maybe it was a case they were playing you know a really bad team but um doesn't make the goals any less lovely to watch forget like playing against a bad team like yeah fine if you're taking it if you're playing a bad team you can probably take it past the players a bit easier but that pass for the assist mm. like you can make that against any team and make that look incredible like that pass was one of the best passes I've ever seen like it was incredible yeah, I, I don't know how he spotted it. A little touch with the outside of his boot. Perfect that is pure vision. Well. That is pure vision. Something that we are missing, I feel like. Well, obviously Madison has that, but uh, oh, but we have been missing it for a lot of the season. And look, hopefully he's ready for the first team because this guy is a superb talent. Everyone on uh, on X was calling him a future Ballon d'Or winner. <laughs> what do you reckon? I'm, I'm not saying anything just yet. I'm not <laughs> saying, well, but things looking good. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> All right, well, that is your Tottenham update for today. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts regarding all the news stories we brought to you today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on you Spurs. Spurs.